Hello everybody, my name is Morgan Evans. I'm a friend of the Catherine Vowed Hubbard Animal Sanctuary and I'm here today to talk to you about a very exciting and very important uh, activity for you guys to do here in the middle of the winter and that is the Great Backyard Bird Count. Uh, if you're not familiar with the Great Backyard Bird Count, it is an annual event. It happens February 12th to the 15th every year and you, yes you as a community scientist, can take part in this event and we encourage you to take part in this event. And I'm here to explain a little bit about it and uh, ways for you to easily uh, enjoy the wonderful world of birding if you're new to it or if you've been birding for 40, 50 years. Um, partnership between Audubon Society, Cornell Lab of Ornithology, and Birds Canada. The Great Backyard Bird Count has been going on since about 1998. And uh, believe it or not, last year there were over 17 million birds seen around the world and about 195 species of birds. Uh, so it's a great, great way for us as scientists and for you as community scientists to uh, observe these birds, to count these birds, and to help the scientific world understand the distribution and the numbers of these individual bird species. So if you're wondering uh, how to, you can become part of this community science circle and, and involve yourself in this wonderful, wonderful count, uh, it's really quite simple. All you have to do is spend 15 minutes at a minimum, at least one time between the 12th and the 15th, sitting or walking and observing birds. It's that easy. All you need to do is look out a window, walk down a trail, and count the different number of birds that you see and the individual bird species. Now, this is a great activity for first time bird watchers. It's also a great activity for those that can't get themselves outside very easily anymore or want to stay inside on these cold winter days. Uh, they can look right out their window at their backyard bird feeders and they can see those species and they can count them. Now you might be thinking that you're not that much of an expert bird watcher and that's okay. There are plenty of apps and there are plenty of resources out there for you to use to be able to identify these different birds. Some classic old school uh, um, Guides that you could use uh, are the Sibley Bird Guide or the National Geographic Guide to North American Birds. Those are classic kind of book in hand. There are also some pocket guides that you can find on Amazon and other wonderful local bookstores carry um, some of these nice pocket guides. Or you can get a little bit more high tech and you can go online and uh, download some really wonderful apps for your phone. Uh, the Sibley app is amazing as well as the uh, Birds of North America by National Ge Geographic. But there's also the app that we're going to be using to enter our bird data, that is eBird. Uh, just like iPhone, it's the letter E and then B-I-R-D, eBird. And uh, that's the app that you're going to have to use in order to be a part of this great backyard bird count. The way that we collect this, the, the data, the science, is through that eBird app. Simple email address will get you onto that app. You can find all of the information that I'm telling you, as well as places to enter, on the website www.birdcount.com. Dot org. So that's B-I-R-D-C-O-U-N-T dot org, birdcount.org. And it'll give you all frequently asked questions, all the information that you can need. So you're sitting at your window, you're observing your birds. All you need to do, take a little tally of the individual species you see and the number of those species. It's really important that you give the number of the individual species. Scientists like us want to know which species you see, but we also want to know the number of those species that are around in the area. Now, you might be a little bit concerned about not being able to identify the correct species, and like I said, that's okay. You can start out very simple, and the perfect time to start out is in the winter. Believe it or not, here in Connecticut, it's a lot easier to identify some of the birds in the winter because there aren't quite as many of them to be overwhelmed with. Sometimes I find myself, even as a bird watcher of 15 years, in the middle of that spring migration, looking every which way, listening every which way, not really sure which birds are calling. But in the winter, it's a little bit quieter, a little bit calmer. So some of those birds that you're gonna uh, see here in the winter are birds like the Northern Cardinal, right? We know that bright red, gorgeous bird that stands out against the, the white backdrop. Uh, some of our wood, woodpecker species, downy woodpecker, hairy woodpecker, the red-bellied woodpecker, right? And the beautiful thing about the uh, eBird app is that if you're not quite sure what the species is, there is an option for you to put woodpecker species. So you're still giving the data that there is a species of woodpecker and you're not quite sure what it is, that's okay. You're still giving those scientists the information that they need to know that there are woodpecker species around. Now, if you wanna get a little bit more detailed and you wanna to start to identify these birds on your own, I had referenced some of those different guides 
And there's also a wonderful app called the Merlin Bird ID app. Merlin as in the famous magician of, of lore and also one of our uh, local falcon species, the Merlin Bird. So it's M-E-R-L-I-N, -E Merlin Bird app. And that will allow you to identify these birds based off of their color, their size, their shape, and also their location. So that'll help you sort of kind of narrow down the area that, uh, that you're in to be able to identify these birds a little bit better. Now, like I had referenced, some of these birds are, are staying here through the winter. We don't have as many species around in the winter. And there's a few reasons for that. Uh, you had learned or, or will be learning about some of the different bird feeders we have available. As you can see here, our bird feeders at Catherine Violet Hubbard Animal Sanctuary are already empty for the day. The birds have been very busy eating these seeds. They love a good snack. And uh, you might be concerned that if you don't refill your feeder right, right away, or if this feeder's empty, where are those birds gonna go? Don't worry, they know the local area. They know all those hot spots for all those bird seeds to get. Uh, so they're doing just fine in the winter. They're also out collecting things like winterberry holly. I had some bluebirds on my winterberry berry holly bush this morning, uh, halfway through the winter. And um, also there are some insects available uh, in, the, in the cracks or the crevices of, of, of the bark of the trees. So the birds that are here in the winter, uh, some of the nuthatches, black-capped chickadee, tufted titmouse, they are still able to survive in this cold climate by getting enough uh, sustenance. And in the summer, in the spring during migration, these all the birds that are down in South America, Central America, they're going to make their way back up here uh, and they're going to start eating the insects. So the diets are going to shift a little bit. We had referenced some of the different bird seed type and the bird feeder types. Uh, the best time of the year to feed those birds is in the winter. However, uh, you can continue to feed them through the spring and summer. It's kind of a misnomer that you're not supposed to feed them. They're still gonna eat the food. However, their diet does change and your feeder diets uh, should change a little bit as well. Uh, you can put things out like orange slices, mealworms, uh, fruits and nuts, different things like that for these birds to get kind of a varied diet through the year. But again, you wanna use things like the Merlin app, the Sibley bird guide in hand or the National Geographic bird, bird guide in hand and then you're gonna be entering all of your data on the eBird app or on the computer at eBird.com. And again, all of the information you need for this wonderful, amazing citizen science project, the Great Backyard Bird Count, can be found at www.birdcount.org. So, I think I'm gonna take some time and walk around this amazing property here at Kathleen Vought Hubbard Animal Sanctuary and look for some of those winter birds, and maybe I'll get a little counting in early, but I know I'll be back here between February 12th and February 15th to participate in the Great Backyard Bird Count. We hope to see you guys out here or anywhere that you can go and find birds in your local area. Have a great time, enjoy it, enjoy the weather, and we'll see you soon.